Language, it's more than just words. It's a living, breathing entity that evolves with us. It's a dazzling, complex system that we often take for granted. We use it to communicate, yes, to share our thoughts and ideas, but it's also a powerful social tool that shapes our interactions. Think about it. The way we speak can reveal our age, gender, and even our social background. Intrigued? It's like a social fingerprint. Enter the fascinating world of sociolinguistics, where language meets society. This field studies how language varies and changes based on social factors like class, ethnicity, and even geography. One of the pioneers of sociolinguistics is William Leboeuf, a name synonymous with the field. His groundbreaking research in the 1960s revolutionized our understanding of language and society, showing us that language is deeply intertwined with our social lives. Labov showed that language isn't just about grammar rules or vocabulary. It's a vibrant, ever-evolving reflection of who we are and where we come from, a mirror to our identities. Language, as Labov brilliantly demonstrated, is a stage where social forces play out in fascinating ways, revealing the dynamics of power, identity, and community. Let's delve into some of these forces, shall we? The journey promises to be enlightening. Prepare to be amazed by the intricate dance between language and society. It's a story of connection, diversity, and endless evolution. Sociolinguists, those clever linguistic detectives, have a secret weapon sociolinguistic variables. What are these, you ask? They're specific features of language that shift and change depending on the speaker's social background. Think of pronunciation, for instance. Do you say tomato with a long A or a short A? Or grammar? Do you say I didn't do anything or I didn't do nothing? These subtle variations might seem trivial, but they speak volumes. They can reveal a speaker's age, gender, social class, ethnicity, and more. Sociolinguistic variables are the keys to unlocking the secrets of language variation. By studying them, we gain a deeper understanding of how language reflects and reinforces social identities. Ready to explore some specific examples? Onwards. Ah, the language of teenagers ever-changing, often baffling to older generations. It's a vibrant, living testament to their creativity and adaptability. Young people are linguistic innovators, constantly inventing new words and phrases that reflect their unique experiences and perspectives. Slang, for example, is a hallmark of youth language. It's a dynamic and evolving form of expression. Think lit, extra, or slay. These words capture the essence of their culture and the zeitgeist of their generation. These terms might leave some adults scratching their heads, but they're crucial for young people to express their identity and solidarity. It's their way of building a community and feeling connected. But it's not just about slang. The influence of young people on language goes much deeper. Young people often drive language change more broadly. They are at the forefront of adopting new technologies and integrating them into everyday speech. They adopt new technologies and incorporate them into their speech, creating new ways to communicate and share ideas. They challenge established norms and push linguistic boundaries, constantly reshaping the way we use language. In doing so, they shape the future of language itself. Their contributions are invaluable and pave the way for linguistic evolution. So next time you hear a teenager using a word you don't understand, don't despair. Instead, see it as an opportunity to learn and appreciate the ever-changing nature of language. Embrace it as a sign of language's dynamism and the creative power of young people. Their linguistic innovations are a testament to their ingenuity and the vibrant future of communication. Believe it or not, men and women often use language differently. This isn't about some inherent difference between the sexes. Rather, it's about the different social roles and expectations placed upon men and women. Research suggests that women tend to use more polite and indirect language. They might say, would you mind closing the window, instead of close the window? Men, on the other hand, are often socialized to be more assertive and direct in their speech. Of course, these are just generalizations. There's a great deal of variation within genders, and these patterns are constantly evolving. But by understanding these broad tendencies, we can start to dismantle harmful stereotypes and promote more equitable communication. Section 5. Pronouncing Prestige. Social Class and the Sounds of Speech. Did you know that your accent can reveal your social class? It's true. 
The way we speak can often give away subtle clues about our background and upbringing. William Labov's famous study of department stores in New York City demonstrated this phenomenon beautifully. He meticulously analyzed how people from different social strata pronounced certain sounds. Labov found that salespeople in higher status stores tended to pronounce their R sounds more frequently than those in lower status stores. This subtle difference in pronunciation was a clear indicator of social class. This phenomenon, known as roticity, is just one example of how pronunciation can vary across social classes. Roticity refers to the pronunciation of the R sound in words. Other examples include the pronunciation of the sounds and the use of glottal stops. These variations aren't random. They are systematic and often reflect one's social environment. They often reflect deeply ingrained social hierarchies and biases. The way we speak can influence how we are perceived and treated by others. By understanding the connection between language and social class, we can start to challenge these biases and promote greater social equality. Awareness is the first step towards change. And by recognizing these patterns, we can work towards a more inclusive society. Section 6. Ethnicity and Expression Language is a cultural tapestry. Language is a powerful marker of ethnic identity. Different ethnic groups often have their own distinct dialects and languages. Think of African American Vernacular English, or AAVE, for example, with its unique grammar and vocabulary. These linguistic features aren't errors or deviations from standard English. They're valuable expressions of cultural heritage and identity. Unfortunately, certain dialects and languages are often stigmatized or discriminated against. This can have serious consequences, limiting opportunities for education, employment, and social mobility. It's crucial that we recognize and value the linguistic diversity within our societies. Embracing different languages and dialects enriches our understanding of the world and promotes inclusivity. Section 7. Real-World Sociolinguistics, From Department Stores to Courtrooms the principles of sociolinguistics aren't just confined to academic journals, they have real-world implications. Consider the courtroom, for example. Lawyers and judges must be aware of how language can influence juries. A witness's dialect or accent can unconsciously sway jurors' perceptions of their credibility. Or think about marketing and advertising. Companies carefully tailor their language to target specific demographics. They know that using the right language can make all the difference in attracting customers. These examples demonstrate that sociolinguistics is far from being a dry, theoretical field. It's a vital lens through which to understand the complexities of human interaction. Section 8. Labov's Legacy, Understanding Language in Its Social Context William Labov's pioneering work revolutionized the field of linguistics. He showed that language isn't just about rules and structures. It's a dynamic, ever-evolving system shaped by social forces. Labov's research paved the way for a deeper understanding of how language varies across different social groups. His work has had a profound impact on fields as diverse as education, law, and sociology. Thanks to Labov and other sociolinguists, we now have a much richer appreciation for the intricate dance between language and society. Section 9. Embracing Diversity Language as a Window into Identity. Language is more than just a means of communication. It's a powerful symbol of who we are. Our accents, dialects, and languages reflect our backgrounds, experiences, and values. Instead of trying to erase or suppress linguistic diversity, we should celebrate it. Each language and dialect is a unique and valuable expression of human culture. By embracing linguistic diversity, we foster inclusivity, understanding, and respect for different identities. So, the next time you hear someone speaking differently than you, listen closely. You might just learn something new about their culture, their identity, and the wonderful diversity of human language. Section 10. A final word, celebrating the rich tapestry of language. As we've seen, language is a wonderfully complex and dynamic system. It's constantly evolving, reflecting the ever-changing tapestry of human society. By understanding the social forces that shape language, we gain a deeper appreciation for its nuances and complexities. We learn to appreciate language not just as a tool for communication, but as a window into the human experience. So let's celebrate the incredible diversity of human language. Let's embrace the accents, dialects, and languages that make us unique. 
For in the rich tapestry of human expression, every voice deserves to be heard.